called Million Dollar R. We find the first Major League Baseball player from India. A little distressed by how the character of JB dealt with the magnificence of the Taj Mahal because I, I've had the pleasure of seeing it and I wondered what your personal experience was. When I was you, blown away by it. Right? We all know the, like, the white part of the Taj Mahal, but you, what no, few people know, you can kind of see it a little bit. The, the, red, the red ones on the side are yep. equally as amazing. And the gate that you walk through to they get there is it's spectacular. You just, like, you're like, nobody takes pictures of this. This thing is amazing too. Right. Um, but then when you see it, it is, it is jaw dropping. I mean, it just is amazing. And uh, yes, we play that for a laugh in the in the uh, in the movie that he's he's ignoring the Taj Mahal. But uh, in real life, you are correct; it is breathtaking. Now, in the film, uh, John Hamm, while he's playing you, is a little bit dismissive of the Taj Mahal, <laughs> which you guys are sitting in front of. I definitely took more umbrage to the Taj. I mean, it was amazing when I saw it. But I, that that's not a necessarily the most accurate portrayal of my first impressions of the Taj. But um, I think it's indicative of how frustrated I was with Ray at a certain point and um, how much, you know, Ash wasn't there. And I was just kind of like, here, you tell him. And, you know. <laughs> <laughs> now, how did the pitch for this movie go? Was it a little something like, you're going to play a really grounded, wonderful lady character <laughs> and everyone gets to go to India but you? <laughs> oh, yeah, what is up with that? What the hell? <laughs> Boo. Boo. I was like, it's great that you're hanging with John Hamm. But the hamster. where is my ticket to India? India, right. I mean, listen, it was the source of a lot of pain. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have a moment in your life that comes to mind where you first triumphed in front of a really big group of people? Um, you know, I mean, I can think back to being in fourth grade and doing being Winnie the Pooh and taking a bow in front of, you know, my mom and the rest of the parents at Robin Hill Elementary School. And uh, and I can I can draw a direct line from there to like the first time I hosted Saturday Night Live and and uh, and, and having the feeling that that went well. Um, Dressed like Winnie the Pooh, I remember it. Yeah, I, that was, I, I did the whole show in a Winnie the Pooh costume, which was a <laughs> weird choice. But you know what, Lauren, let me do it. Um, and I can, you know, I can, I can draw the, another line to, 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 to having audition for like seven or eight pilots during pilot season, <clears throat> and the eighth one being Mad Men, and not getting seven, and then getting the eighth, and Boom. the eighth changing my life. So there's been a lot of uh, similar. Uh, ups and downs and 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 uh, crushing failures followed by uh, exultant successes. You were like kind of palsies with the hamster. Ham ham and I ham sandwich, yeah. Can you confirm <laughs> you think he Skypes without pants on? I um, feel like he's a non-pants Skyper. I would totally not put it past him to Skype without pants. Right. I mean, you know, I think he's a, a strong enough man um, in himself. I mean, I might Skype without pants on. Another I mean, high I, five. Yeah. Love it. I mean, I don't see <laughs> what the point of pants are when you're Skyping. How does Mad Men end? Oh, Mad Men ends with, you're going to think this is weird, but um, it ends in, with an ultimate Frisbee game. <laughs> I don't yes! know. Yeah, it's fun. It's like super fun. I won't tell you who wins. It's Peggy. But uh, <laughs> it's super fun.